So welcome, everyone. Let's see, how does one actually start the clock, I guess, is the question. There we are, if you want to figure that out. All right, so welcome, everyone, to what I believe is, well, definitely the best project server business intelligence session at this conference. In fact, I will personally guarantee that or your money back. And I believe, we were talking about this, this might be the best project server business intelligence for 2013 presentation presented to an audience of this size ever. So I think we're making history today. I think so. Is what we're doing. Awesome. Well, fantastic. How's Las Vegas? Pretty good? Anyone actually winning money? A couple of us. I'm up 34 bucks. I'm doing pretty well. Great. Excellent. So without much further ado, today our plan is to talk about business intelligence tools and how they can be used to report on project server data. Now there's a lot of tools that we can talk about. And I'll point out, you know, the project server reporting story is essentially a SharePoint reporting story because many of the tools we're going to use are SharePoint tools with possibly one or two exceptions with what we're going to show you today. So when you look at all the tools that we could use and have used, we obviously could not talk about every single tool in a 75-minute session. In fact, we actually have given a couple presentations like this. We did uh, two 75-minute sessions that are recorded and online, uh, and we'll give you the links to those at the end of this presentation. So we selected kind of a representative sample of those tools, and today we will be talking about these four more or less. Now I'll point out that Mike and I walked into this conference on Monday and we were very confident. We were like, hey, we got some great demos. People are going to love this. And then we sat in the keynote and we watched our demo up on the keynote. And we kind of feel like, like when you get that perfect dress for prom and then you get to prom and everyone's wearing the same dress. So what we did was we, we, we thought about it and we retooled it a bit. So uh, we've kind of changed up the demos. So we will cover everything that we plan to. We might kind of speed through or skim a rock over some of the stuff that we think other people have already probably covered. Uh, and we've extended some other sessions or some other parts that we think would probably uh, enhance what you've seen in some of the other sessions. In fact, uh, I think some of you are probably surprised when Bon Jovi last night didn't rock out the Power View map report. Was anyone expecting that? He actually was going to. Mike and I sat down with him before the concert, talked him out of it. Little known fact, and I was surprised, John Bon Jovi's actually a project server guy. <laughs> Didn't know that? Like exactly. <laughs> pretty psyched about the cloud, too, because I guess it's pretty hard to put an entire server farm in a tour bus. So anyways, we're going to go all, basically, the way I describe it is we went all Molly Ringwald on her prom dress. If anyone's seen uh, Pretty in Pink, where she takes her prom dress and she rips it up and she sews it all back together again in a slightly different but better way. So that's what we've done with our demos and that's what we've got in store for you today. So today we'll be talking about timelines. I know everyone, probably most of you have seen timelines at this point, I'm guessing. Some of the desktop reporting investment in the Microsoft Project Tool. Uh, we'll be talking about OData and Excel. And, and finally, we'll be talking a little bit about SharePoint apps. Now, who am I, you're asking? My name is Andrew Levinsky. And I am with UMT, a project and portfolio management consulting shop. We focus on enhancing project and portfolio management consulting. I personally am an MVP. As you may or may not notice from my funny accent, I'm originally from Ohio, currently living in Texas. Go Bucks. Yeah. All right. Um, I have a blog, and, and Mike here will also introduce his blog, uh, where we have documented step by step instructions and screenshots to reproduce all of the demos that you will see today. So don't worry about taking exhaustive notes. We've got it all documented. If you want to recreate any of these at home, we've got it all online. In fact, there's a post that will be coming out shortly after this session is over, which will include all the links and the instructions on how to do that. Now presenting with me is the rocket from Redmond, a guy so cool he puts ice in Office 365, Mr. Mike McLean. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Hi, everyone. 
My name is Mike McLean. I'm a program manager with the Microsoft Project Team. So I work in the engineering organization in Redmond. And most recently, I've been focused on shipping this new service called Project Online. You've probably heard a lot about it this week. Uh, it's new in Office 365. And in addition to that, I also work on the business intelligence and reporting features of Project Server. Uh, before that, I spent some time helping ship SharePoint Online about a year and a half ago to all of you. So that was super exciting and really, really neat to see that go out the door. Uh, and before that, I also spent some time in uh, Dynamics looking at financial reporting and, and analytics. So I think uh, this is probably one of the two times I've actually been on a boat in Seattle. <laughs> so I took a picture just to make it look like I'm actually from there. Next time, I'll try to get a uh, Starbucks cup in my hand just to make it look a little more authentic. Just to prove it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so like Andrew said, we have a project blog where we've already started rolling out tons of posts on 2013. So we've already got posts on server reporting, the timelines, a lot of different features. So I definitely encourage you to check those out after the session. Uh, I think today we mainly just want you to relax, see the demos that we're going to run through, uh, take a look at the reports that we're going to build, and don't worry about the step-by-step -step instructions because these are going to roll out on our blog as well as Andrew's blog. So moving forward, today, like I said, we're going to show a lot of different BI features. And uh, with the release of Project Online, it's really exciting. We've got the service that's in the cloud. But it also introduces some, some confusion, and it, it is very disruptive, right, to the marketplace. Uh, companies have spent time building reports on premise. Now they're asking, well, OK, is this scenario supported in, in the cloud? What's available? How do I get access to my data? And so today, I think we've done a pretty good job of putting together a good set of demos. Uh, and pretty much everything you'll see today is available both in Office 365 and on premise. OK, so when you go back and you say, hey, I want to build that report. I want to use OData. How is this going to work? Well, you can just kind of sit back and say, all right, well, that's going to pretty much work in both scenarios. Any exceptions, we'll try to call out. Uh, so hopefully that'll, that'll uh, put your mind at ease a little bit. So the past uh, couple of years, uh, you know, as we've been planning for 2013, we know that we've been facing some business challenges just in the marketplace. Uh, we know our employees want to work from anywhere. They're working in the office. They're working at home. They're on multiple devices. And from a BI perspective, we're asking questions, well, how do we get access to our data? And how do we view those reports? Uh, companies, they want to roll out new software and services without investing in all of that upfront infrastructure costs. Um, and if, if your business isn't uh, solely focused on IT, you might have uh, different competing priorities if, uh, if your core competency is something else. Uh, so today, since this is a business intelligence session, uh, we're going to focus on the first and, and the last item, which is that people want to get access to their data if they're running projects online in a cloud or on premises, and how do they pull that data out? And we know that people want to see uh, data related to multiple projects if they have a portfolio and project server, uh, and they were reporting over you know, tens or hundreds of projects, how do they pull that out? How do they see how things are unfolding over time in a timeline or a report or whatnot? Now, this, uh, this week, uh, we've been announcing the new project, both for, with project client and with project server. And we've built out a ton of great enhancements that focus on uh, getting started more quickly in the client and the server with improved getting started experiences. We've got, of course, a very flexible PPM solution, uh, whether you're managing projects in SharePoint using Taskless or in project server in a more structured way. Uh, our reporting solutions can cover both of those scenarios. Uh, and of course, there's tons of collaboration involved with SharePoint and, and sharing those, uh, those reports through uh, features like Excel services. Uh, so today we're going to walk through some of that with you. And I think when we, when we launched Project Online, uh, it would have been uh, really easy to say, oh, you know what? This is a first release. We're going to let you manage some projects, uh, store your resources, uh, maybe do some task management. But reporting is a really tough thing, and we'll just worry about that later. We'll just worry about getting your data in there. But I'm happy to say we have a full end-to-end -end solution with reporting. So once you get your project data in there, you can come full circle and pull that out using tools like Excel 2013. So we're going to walk through that today a little bit. So before we jump into the demos, let me hand it back to uh, the, the John Bon Jovi of BI, <laughs> right. Andrew Levinsky, to get us started. Excellent. Great. So some of you have probably seen this presentation before. You know what's coming. Uh, we do need, typically as part of this, a volunteer to assist us. Uh, and, and part of this is, is our effort to improve or, or to continuously improve our presentation. This is our first time presenting all these different options, all these different reporting options. And we really need your feedback to tell us what works and what doesn't. So the next time we give this presentation, we can really tailor it to your feedback. So we do need a volunteer. Would anyone like to volunteer? They do get a fabulous prize at the end. 
You, ma'am. Thank you for volunteering. What is your name? Teresa. Teresa. All right. So Teresa is our new Teresometer. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. What does that mean? So basically, you got two obligations. One, you got to stay awake. And two, you got to stay here for the entire session. Can you commit to both of those sacred duties? Excellent. You can. Um, so here's how it's going to work. We're going to calibrate our Teresometer. She's going to gauge your applause to all of the fantastic things we're going to show you. So we need to calibrate Teresa. How do we do that? First, let's pretend that you have just seen the best feature ever. This is a feature so awesome that it's, it's like a button. You click on the button, and, and everything just magically manages your project. It sends out these beautiful 3D reports to everyone involved. Uh, and you can basically go on vacation. It'll manage your project for you. How would you react if I showed you that feature? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. That was pretty a standing ovation. Good. Now, our second goal is also to annoy the people in the room next door. So let's see if we can kind of ramp that up a little bit. So how would you react if I showed you that feature? All right. That's what I want to hear. All right, so Teresa, that's a 10. Now, how would you react if I showed you a feature that was probably mislabeled, and you clicked on it, it deleted all of your data, emailed everyone telling, how, telling them how foolish you really are and how horrible of a project manager you are? How would you react if I showed you that? Ooh. All right, so that's a zero. So you got calibrated. So as we go through the demos, we require you to gauge the audience from zero to 10, and you're going to give us our score on all of those. Got it? Great. That's what we needed. Let's get on with the show. Uh, and I hand it off to Mike. Great. So the first area we're going to cover is timelines. Just a quick show of hands. How many people have seen a timeline this week? OK, pretty much everybody. Everybody in the room. So <laughs> uh, that's kind of what I expected. So we'll, we'll come at this from a slightly different angle. We'll, we'll have more of just uh, a review of timelines, and, and we'll try to make this a little Unless bit Unless you want us to spend, we can spend a good 45 minutes <laughs> talking about all the different permutations of timelines, all different colors. I don't know. I, I think we have a lot no? more. I think all we right. have a lot more to show. OK. All right. All right. So, so timelines, can anybody tell me how many timelines do we have between project server and SharePoint server, roughly? Well, guess. Just a guess. Throw it out there. One, two, somebody said two, three. So there's about three, OK? So we have about three. There is a timeline for your My Task that you can build for your personal tasks and your My Site. There is a timeline for any SharePoint task list now in SharePoint, right? You can add tasks to your timeline. And there is a timeline in Project Center. So Project Center is part of Project Server. You can add projects from your portfolio up there to get a nice visual representation in, in a timeline. Uh, if you include the timeline in Project Client, that's about, that's about four. That shipped in 2010. So I think what we'll do is we'll just jump over uh, really quick to our first demo here. And we'll just walk through uh, all three of these just, just real quick. Uh, so this is the new getting started experience in Project Web App. Whether you deploy Project Web App on-premise with Project Server or in the cloud with Project Online, this is your new getting started experience. You have a beautiful carousel, just like SharePoint. And if I navigate up to the projects link, this will load Project Center. So now you can see you have this great space at the top that's reserved for a timeline in Project Center. This wasn't there before. Uh, so I can actually come through my list of projects, and I can select one and just click Add Project in the timeline. You can see this adds up to the timeline. I've got it there. I can track it. I can see where it's at. So I've added one project. If I want to add more than one project, I can do a Shift Select. I can add these as well. Now you can see I've got multiple projects in my timeline. Uh, as, as my projects progress, I could drop these out. If I want to remove one, that's great. I can pull that out. Now, I've added individual projects here. Now, if I've got a particular task that's important to me that I want to add into my project timeline as well, there's an option to add tasks. So when I click that, it'll bring up a dialog here that displays all the tasks within that project. So if I wanted to add my design task to my timeline, I can add that. And you can see here, it just dropped into my timeline. So I can add projects for my portfolio. I can add individual projects. And I can even modify how this looks. 
So this is the project center timeline. Like I said, it was not there before. Uh, but it is related to BI and, and reporting because it gives a quick visu visualization of uh, the state of your projects and, and where they're at. So I'm going to pause here just for a minute because this is the first feature that we've shown. And let's see, how does the new project center timeline rate on our new Theresometer? OK. Not bad. OK. Not bad. Lisa, what did you say? Not bad for the first feature? Probably about six. OK. All Good. right. Good. All right, so let's keep going. And, and uh, I'll point out, by the way, that this is probably one of the most commonly requested types of reports that I see. I can't tell you how many clients are doing this in Excel or PowerPoint, where they'll put all their projects in one sort of executive dashboard of all their projects. So, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and even earlier this year, we showed how to do this with Visio. Now you can do it right here in, in Project Center without any additional tools. So if I scroll down now, and I have this, uh, this huge list of projects, uh, let's pull one out. I have a word processing project. Now, this is a project that I'm managing in SharePoint with a SharePoint task list. Uh, there's other project server sessions this week that talk about how to pull those into project server. But we'll focus on the BI and reporting aspect. We have this project that has a list of tasks. Now, I can actually select individual tasks here, click my task ribbon, and I can add these to the timeline as well. So now I can walk through, and I can actually build a timeline for this project. Now, this is specific to this project, so it's kind of drilling in one level deeper. Um, but right here, I've, I've already got a timeline for my project. I didn't even have to open any other tools. Um, now, the question we always get is, well, how interactive is this timeline? Do I need to refresh it? Uh, is it dynamic? Well, it's fully interactive. I can change the color of any of these bars. So if I want to make it red, I can make it red. Uh, you got Got to be careful about red on the schedule, though, but yes. <laughs> All right, well, that one's, OK, we'll make this one, uh, how about a darker green? Ah, that that's like? much better. OK, much better. Great. If I want to make some of these a call out, I can make these a call out. If I drag this around, it's fully dynamic. You'll see this will adjust. So it's great. It's, uh, it's very interactive, and it's specific to my project. How does that rate on the Teresometer? <laughs> a little bit. Great. OK. What? About the same, about, about the same? six. About six? OK, great. We're just getting warmed up. All right, so we'll show, uh, we'll show one more feature here. Now that I have this timeline, up here on the ribbon, I can actually select Open with Project. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull all these tasks into the project client. Let's click through this. And you can see here, now my timeline's a little bit scrunched. But uh, you can see here, I've got those tasks that I added in my timeline. I can adjust this later if I want. But you can see it uh, preserved the formatting. So I have a green bar. I have a red bar. I've got all my tasks from SharePoint that I, that I sync down here. Now, now that I have all my data in the project client, I can take advantage of all the new reports that are made available in the project client this release. I think one of the biggest requests we always get is more reporting, more reporting. We want more reporting out of the box. Uh, so in the project 2013 client, there's a whole stack of reports and dashboards. Uh, I can grab the burndown report. You can see this is already populated. So I already have a burndown that's reflecting the state of my project. Um, and then let's see, I could uh, even show you another one if we have like a project overview. Um, we've got our dates here, we have milestones due, we haven't made any progress on this one yet. Uh, but basically, we can take advantage of all this great reporting that's available right out of the box with the project client. Okay? Uh, all right, so let's uh, flip back here to. Well, before we do that, how does that rate on the Theresometer? <laughs> Uh, all right, a lot of applause we're, we're trending here. Going up. What was that? <laughs> An eight. And we're going we're gonna to hit a 10, a 10 or 11. I guarantee you it's coming up. <laughs> You'll know when. Great. All right, so, so just to recap, we, we, we just kind of skimmed the rock over the surface of timelines. So how to create them in Project Center on a task list, how to pull that into the project client. And then when you make those modifications in the client, they sync back up to the server as well. All right, so let's uh, transition back to the... Well, and, and, and here, we, we might want to change things up a bit, again, because everyone's been, been seeing a lot of the same demos we've been doing. We were thinking about going into a deep dive into the, uh, the new Microsoft Project spell check feature, uh, <laughs> which is just fantastic. Uh, who's excited about spell check? Yeah. All right, well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe that wouldn't yeah. work. All right, well, let's keep going let's with the BI. business yeah. intelligence then. All right, next, next conference, I guarantee we're going to do a spell check session. It's going to be great. All right, so we, we went through that, and now we're talking about the desktop. Now, in 2013, as you probably know, we've got a new world. We've got the on-premise bricks-and-mortar world, and we've got this new, wonderful cloud-based world. And we want to make sure we're not confusing anybody. You get options. Options are good, right? We like having options. 
I can go on-prem or I can go in the cloud. Most, if not all, of what we're showing you today works in both. You still have traditional on-prem options, though. So if you still are reporting against SQL, you can continue to do that. Again, if you're going to the cloud, that's another story, and that's also what we're talking about today. So to recap some of that, Project Server traditionally, and how many of us are actually using Project Server at this point? Show of hands, quite a few folks, all right. So Project Server, as many of us know, stores its data in a reporting database. And typically, most organizations write their reports against that. You need some SQL skills, you can write some SQL queries, pull that data into Excel, Visio, your reporting tool of choice. Now, a lot of organizations also choose using native out-of-the-box functionality to port or to push that reporting data on a nightly basis into an OLAP cube. That's out-of-the-box functionality in Project Server. And we can then use that OLAP cube to report on things like time or like effort, cost, uh, and other variables that are often time phased. I want to see how much I'm spending over time, as opposed to the reporting database, which is typically structured to support reporting against how many projects do I have right now, how many projects do I have assigned to each department. I can pull time phase data out of the reporting database. In fact, that's often my preference. Uh, but it's usually easier to pull it from the OLAP cube. And I would stress this. Uh, for those of you who are using Project Server, how many of you are tracking man hours, or to be politically correct, person hours in Project Server? Much smaller group of people. How many of you are tracking financials in Project Server? Also a much smaller group of people. So what do the rest of you report on? Well, you use email, but what is the data you use to report on? Schedule, right? Milestones. How am I doing against specific milestones? How am I doing against my baselines? Velocity, number of tasks completed over a given period. There's a number of ways of slicing and dicing this. And this is actually one of my focuses. I work with a lot of lower maturity, maturity organizations who don't have a lot of data. And that's, that's why this presentation, by the way, is really the opposite of most of the other BI presentations you'll see here. We're not going to take 2.248 million rows of data and pull that into Excel and do some incredible number crunching. We're going to pull 100 rows of data or 1,000 rows of data. Because let's face it, in project management, we often don't have a whole lot of data to create these compelling reports. So anyways, to make a long story short, one of the, 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 the points I like to emphasize is, for those of you not tracking effort in your schedules, which is perfectly fine, and for those of you not tracking cost in your schedules, the OLAP cube really doesn't do anything for you. And a lot of my clients, I just recommend we don't turn it on, because it's not going to provide any value for them. And that's fine, because we can still develop compelling reports as you're going to see today. So we take those data repositories and we generate our reports using a reporting tool of choice. And as we all know, most people's preferred reporting tool of choice is Excel. If only we could just do away with all the other applications and just run our enterprises only on Excel. Wouldn't life be wonderful? I've seen people try it. In 2013, you have this option for the bricks and mortar, for the on-premises. Mike here now is going to talk about what are your options for the cloud-based model. Great. So when we set out to design the 2013 release, we had kind of a significant challenge laid out in front of us. Uh, as Andrew just described, on-premise you have the reporting database, uh, some, some customers use cubes, and uh, we knew that in Office 365, customers don't have direct access to the database. Uh, so on-premise folks would write SQL queries, online, what were they gonna, gonna do? Uh, and we knew we were not the, the first team to, to face this problem, right? Uh, as, so we started kind of looking around at the different services that are offered and, and what, what was the direction that Microsoft was going in. And we, we found out that Microsoft was uh, really leading the charge with a new concept called the Open Data Protocol. Uh, there were teams like Dynamic CRM internally that have had an online service for a while. And, and they also need to, needed to expose their data for consumption and, and other reporting tools. Uh, so so we, we met with some of these teams, and, and we kind of decided which direction to go. And, and it pointed more towards uh, developing a new data service that's available uh, on top of Project Server to pull that data out. Uh, so so in, in Project Online, uh, you still have a reporting database that's available in the cloud. 
Uh, and now there's a new OData service available that you can use to pull that data into Excel 2013. And I think this is one of the advantages you get of uh, having a PPM solution uh, for Microsoft because uh, we know the Excel team. We worked with them very closely to make sure that uh, you could actually pull data into Excel through OData. You could authenticate into your Office 365 tenant, and then you could actually build uh, reports based on your projects, your tasks, and, and your resources. Uh, so it, it's kind of an interesting concept, and, and before 2013, uh, this was not supported in native Excel. You couldn't authenticate to Office 365 uh, to pull OData in. Uh, so, so we spent some time uh, designing this, and, and we actually built this schema that then maps you know, on top of the, the reporting database. So I think now what we'll do is uh, I'll walk you through how to, how to get access to that data service and how to pull that data out of Project Server. Let me switch uh, here to our demo machine. And uh, the first thing I'll point out is uh, there's a site called um, odata.org. Uh, so if you visit this site, uh, this has a, a lot of great documentation about the odata protocol, um, the ecosystem, the, the various organizations that have taken this up, um, kind of where, where odata is. And um, there's, there's several organizations that are moving towards odata. Like I mentioned, um, Dynamic CRM is one of them. Um, Facebook has an OData feed. Netflix has an OData feed. So there's, there's several uh, companies and services that are coming on board building these feeds. And this OData service, it returns uh, data in an XML format, right? So it looks like an Atom feed. And then it can be consumed by tools like Excel or, or any other XML, uh, XML reader. So, so there's the, the producers of OData, which Project Online is now one of them. And then there's consumers. And the consumers are tools like Excel and, and LinkPad that I'll show you in a, in a little bit. Uh, so, so to use OData, OData has its own, its own URL. And whether you're deploying a uh, project on-premises or in the cloud, uh, you just append a couple of characters to the end of your URI. And here you have underscore API slash project data. And just to zoom in on that a little bit, uh, you can see it's a pretty, pretty short URL. Uh, but this returns this XML markup. And you can see here we have projects, we have baselines, we have deliverables issues and risks. And when we pull this into Excel, it's going to be just like reporting off of any, any SQL table. All right. Now, uh, OData is very similar to, to SQL. Uh, syntax is a little bit different. Um, but what we showed here was the list of entities, aka tables. And within each of those are certain properties. So if I filter out metadata, or if I add metadata, here you can see if I'm reporting against my project table, I can pull in my project ID. I can pull in my start date, my end dates, my actual cost, my calendar. So we're exposing all of this data uh, from Project Online. All right. So this is kind of a, kind of a behind the scenes, a little bit of history of, of uh, where where reporting came from in, in Project Online. So if I copy that that initial URL, uh, which just ended at Project Data, I'm going to flip over here to the new Excel. So this is Excel uh, 2013, and on the data tab, um, you're going to find a new option. So from other sources, if I select from OData data feed, uh, this is a new menu item in Excel 2013. Uh, prior releases of Excel, you needed to install the PowerPivot add-in, uh, and then you could pull in OData. It still didn't support Office 365. But in Excel 2013, they brought this into native Excel. So you can actually pull in OData uh, with Excel right out of the box. So if I select this uh, option, I get a new dialog here for my data connection. And I can just paste in my URL. I don't need to change anything else. And it's going to go retrieve that table list. And you'll see here, this is, this is much easier to read, would you agree, <laughs> than all that XML markup. Uh, but you can see I have the same items, deliverables, issues, risks, et cetera. I'm just going to pull in projects just to show you how this works. I can create an Office data connection file if I like. I'll just skip past that. And here, we'll just drop it into a, into a massive table just to show you all the data that we pull out. So here, I've pulled out my project IDs, my project, uh, my project types. Uh, let me see here. A bunch of empty columns, my actual cost, my duration. Uh, what else do I have here? My variance. So I've got all of the data that's in, uh, that's in Project Server. But I pulled it in via OData. Now that I have this in Excel, I can take advantage of all the great Excel features. So if I had um, you know, project departments, total cost, 
You might have seen the analysis, uh, the quick analysis lens. I can see what might my uh, color scale look like if I wanted to throw in some icons here. They even have some uh, recommended charts if I wanted to you know, create a pivot table off of this. Uh, but the point is I've got all my data in Excel now. I can start taking advantage of, of uh, Excel 2013. Now, if uh, we were running this in Office 365, uh, it actually authenticates me into Office 365, and it verifies that my user that's logged into Excel is a member of the right security group within Project Web App. Uh, so we do authenticate. There's always questions around that. So uh, to kind of just uh, uh, recap of what we just did, we, we learned how to find the OData endpoint in Project Web App how to drop this into Excel and, and pull this data in. So I'm going to pause there for a minute, OK? Uh, and now I think, uh, let me see, we're going to transfer back to, um, we're going to create a report. Yeah, to, uh, to LinkPad. So, uh, so basically, with this, with this table, we've basically pulled in all of the, all of the columns that, that are in Project Server. So I showed you here that there's a ton of columns. Some of them are blank. Uh, and this might not be very performant, right? Uh, because there's you know dozens of, of columns here. Uh, so what's something that we kind of recommend to make your performance perform a little faster is to trim down that data that, that's retrieved. So uh, I'm going to flip over to um, a tool called LinkPad, and this is actually a third-party tool, but it's kind of a pro tip because uh, this is super useful. You can download it for free, and you can see uh, here on the left I've added my OData connection in the left pane, right? And then I have a list of, of those tables. If I expand these, you can actually see all the properties within there, right? And then on the right side, I can actually start writing a quick query that's going to narrow this down. So instead of returning all those hundreds of columns, I can just pull in my project name, my finish date, and my variance, because maybe that, that's all I care about. So my, performs, my, my report's going to perform a lot faster. But here in this query, I have one other field called major milestone, all right? And uh, you, might not, uh, you might not recognize that one because it's a custom field that we added. So in this, uh, in this project that we created, in Project Client, uh, you can see I have a major milestone column. This is a custom field. And so we always get a question, well, how do custom fields work with OData? Like, it's great Microsoft to find the schema and you can pull up my project data and my tasks, but what about all the fields that I create in, in my custom deployments? Well, the great thing about the way we designed our OData service is that whenever you create a custom field and you add that into Project Server, we dynamically update that service so we can pull that in for you. So it's pretty cool. So we do not have a fixed number of, of fields in OData. It's dynamic. So if you have one, you have two, you have three, we can, we can pull them all in. So in, in LinkPad, I've specified that I want that major milestone task as well. Let me just zoom in so you can see better, see better on the, in the back. Uh, so we're just going to pull task where ma major milestone is not null, and we're just going to pull back these four fields. Okay, so uh, when I run this query, I actually get a quick uh, view of what my results are going to look like. So I can see see what data I'm going to return before I even start messing around with Excel. So I don't have to create like a bunch of pivot tables and see what my report's going to look like, do trial and error. I know exactly what data I'm going to ret retrieve in my in my data set. And then what's even better is that I don't need to, to mess around with actually constructing the URL because LinkPad will give this to me. So here I have uh, a URL that's already created. Zoom in a little bit. You can see here that uh, we're filtering where major milestone is not null. And then we're just pulling back those four fields. So uh, OData does provide a way to filter down the fields that you retrieve and, and perform some SQL-like uh, uh, queries. And uh, one thing I just want to point out before I hand it back to Andrew is that in uh, Project Web App, we actually have a set of uh, reports available in the BI Center out of the box that already have these, um, these URLs created. So if you navigate here, I'm going to provision Project Web App, you'll see the project overview, the resource over overview, and this dashboard. These are available out of the box. When you open them up, they have the connections already created. You can use those as a sample. Um, but Andrew is actually going to walk you through a more in-depth way to, to use these connections. All right. Great. So we talked about what was probably one of the most common reports, which is a project or program level overview or program level timeline of our project. What I'm going to show you right now is how to create the second most commonly requested report anyone ever asked me for. And before we go that far, how many of you are actually implementing some sort of a stage gate procedure in your projects? You've got some sort of build, design, approval. I see quite a few hands. 
it's almost universal. When I start going to Project Server, that's one of the first things I want to do is I want to start pulling those major stage gates out of my project and getting a portfolio level overview of what that looks like. So we're going to use that query that Mike just created. So let me just close this. And uh, I'm just going to grab that URL. And let's go back into Excel. And in Excel, again, pretty much I'm going to do exactly what he just did. I'm going to grab the data from other sources, and I'm just going to plug in that URL. And it's going to generate all the data I need for my executive dashboard report. Sure. And let's just create a table. We'll just take a look at our data. Looks good to me. And uh, let's summarize that now with a pivot table. So I'm just going to create a pivot table. And on this pivot table, we're just going to grab a couple fields. We've got our task finish date, our major milestone. Now we just need to format everything properly. Major milestone, task finish date. Uh, let's modify the field a bit. So we're going to change this to maximum. Pivot tables generally, most people are familiar with them. And uh, look at that. Right now I've got every project in my system, I've got every stage gate, and I can now see what date each of those stage gates fall on. Now well, let's just turn off the grand total because that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. And there I've got an overview of all my project uh, stage gates. How does that rank? on the three summer. <laughs> Pretty good? What would we call that? That was an eight? We still got to get to a 10. Yep. We can do that. That's okay. Yeah. Well, uh, as uh, some of you have probably seen, it's not business intelligence unless we add some sort of visual depth and color to it. So let's add uh, a little bit of depth into it. And uh, we're just going to create a new worksheet. And I'm going to insert yet another pivot table. And for this pivot table, I'm going to use the same data. But now what we're going to do is we're going to show the finish variance. So let's just grab all the right fields, project name, major milestone. We'll just configure it all the same way. And what I see now, and again, we're going to remove the grand total, is the pivot of all of the finish variances against the baseline for my tasks. Now, one kind of minor caveat, you'll note that the finish variance is showing in terms of hours. So we've got one day equals eight hours. So you just have to mentally translate 80 hours, 10 days, 160 hours, 20 days. Everyone comfortable with that? Yes. 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 All right. Great. It's the morning. You can do that in the afternoon. So what we're going to do now is let's just set some parameters, right? We're going to do a little green, uh, red, yellow, green. Uh, and to do that, we're just going to add a little conditional formatting. So uh, let's just create a new rule. And uh, we're just going to select all the cells, use a formula. We're going to say everywhere where this is less than or equal to 80. 80, again, meaning 10 days. So we're saying everything that's less than 10 days late, we're going to call green. So let's just add a fill to it. We're going to make that green. Take a look. So far, it looks good. Uh, let's just grab that parameter then, and we're going to take that parameter and we're going to plug it into a couple more rules. So here I'm going to create a new rule, uh, all cells, use a formula, and this time we're going to say everything less than or equal to 20 days, 8 hours a day, 160, is going to be yellow. Again, plug in your own parameters here. And uh, let's just create one new rule. Use a formula. We're going to just plug in the same formula. This time, we're going to say anything greater than 160 will be red. And now it's just a matter of making sure our rules apply in the same, in the right order. So let's set that up and apply. And voila, I now have a color-coded overview of all my program milestones for my project. How does that rank on the three summer? Thank you. And how many of you are going to go back and implement this as part of your dashboard reporting tomorrow? <laughs> a couple. All right. Now, I'll point out, this is not unique to 2013. This is the same report you can generate right now in 2010, 2007, except right now the way I would do that is I would have to write a query against SQL, pull that into Excel, and generate the same report. In 2013 now, what we can do is we can consume that OData feed that Mike was generating and use that, which enables us to generate the same report from the cloud 
that we would heretofore have done on premise. So this is an example of one report. Let me show you another kind of more complicated report. And to do this, we're going to use Excel Power Pivot. Has anyone actually seen the Excel Power Pivot demos? Maybe a couple folks. So Power Pivot's a new feature in Excel and allows us to start building relationships between data in Excel. We can start building our data sets. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to open another file. And in this file, I've actually already created my OData connection. So I'm just going to look at the data connections. And what you'll see here is I've got about four data connections. I've also got this data model. That's just part of Power Pivot. And those we created in advance. They're pulling all the milestones. They're pulling all the forecast finish dates. They're pulling all the baseline finish dates. I've got a list of my projects. I've got a list of every date on which I could possibly have tasks finish. And what we can do now is build a model of that data and generate a report. And to do that, I'm going to go into Power Pivot. Power Pivot is now free. It's part of Excel. It's an add-in. It, it is turned off. Well, it's hidden out of the box. And to turn it on or to activate it, you go under Tools Options. Under Add-ins, you can then activate it so we can see it. And this shows me the data, the raw data that's coming back from the data feeds. I can actually manipulate this in a number of different ways. I'm sure there have been some other great presentations on how to do that here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the tables. And we've got almost like a relational database. In fact, pretty much it is. And I've got my forecast data, my baseline data. I've got my time set. And I'm just going to add links. In fact, tell you what, let's just put this up here, put this down here. Again, I'm, I'm still in Excel. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to marry the tables and build these relationships. So I'm going to grab our time by day, map it up here. And let's go down here. And I've got my total date. So what I've done is essentially build a data set using those four different OData feeds. OData feeds, by the way, don't have to be uh, limited to Project Server. I can be pulling that from a number of different sources. Uh, so let's go back into Excel now that we've done this. And I'm going to create a cumulative milestone report, which is, I would say, arguably the third most commonly requested report that I generate. And while I do that, it's going to take a minute or two. Mike here is going to field some questions. So if anyone's got questions, now's the time. Any questions up to this point? Uh, one right here. So, uh, you have deadlines that you can't cross. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can you can pull the data out of Project Online using using no data and then and pretty much store it wherever you would like. Um, I guess uh, you would still need the Excel 2013 client. So um, I guess it, if you have SharePoint Online uh, or if you have SharePoint on-prem, um, you could you could then pull data out of SharePoint on-prem and probably do some mashup with the Excel client locally. Um, but you would just need to pull that data out of Project Online as well. If that makes sense. Oh, sure. Thanks. Okay, so, so the question was, if you have SharePoint on-prem 2010, uh, can you also pull data out of Project Online and combine that as well, I think? And, and the answer there is uh, both ways, both ways. Yeah, so, so the answer there is uh, yes, you would need Excel 2013 to pull the data out of Project Online. And then uh, you would just pull your data out of SharePoint on-prem as well. And then, um, and then you'd probably have to link it up using what Andrew just showed you. Uh, what's interesting about uh, SharePoint uh, on-prem is that there's also an OData service. It's called the, the list data service. Uh, so if you have data that's in a task list, for example, uh, you can actually point, there's an OData endpoint you can point to that will pull that data out. Uh, so we do, we actually did a presentation earlier this year that we've linked to here in the, in the slide deck where uh, you, can, you can add a property to that task list that pre-populates with a project ID. Uh, because I think the key there to link it up is to have that unique identifier. So if you have a project ID in that task list, you can pull that data out, uh, have all their data in Excel, and then link it all together. So that would probably be the, the scenario that you'd, that you'd want to look at. Great. All right. So what we have here, and by the way, for, how many of you would consider yourselves chart aficionados in Excel? Maybe one or two. All right. Uh, for me, this was exciting. Uh, this is a new aid, I suppose, when I'm formatting my chart, I can actually go in here and I can look at all my series and I can plot them against different axes. It actually saves a lot of time. And what I have now is this wonderful timeline report. 
uh, which is obviously, it's a little bit long. We're going into 2014. Tell you what, let's just add the timeline slicer, which some of you have probably seen at this point, I'm guessing, but let's just add it here. So I'm going to add the timeline. We're going to track by time. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's put it over here just so I can control it. Uh, let's go by quarters. And so now, if I want to look at 2013, I can look at, here's my proposed milestones in 2013. If I want to look at 2012, I can see this is what 2012 looked like. We don't need to get too worried about what data we're representing. Again, this is all documented. What we're trying to do is show that you can actually create some compelling reports using OData feeds and using the relationships you create in Power Pivot. So how does this rate on the Teresometer? <laughs> yep. Not bad. What would you call that? That's a nine. That's a nine? I All think right. the next one, we could get it up to 10. Pretty close. Right. So, well, so. let me publish it to SharePoint, and then let's move on and show you what I think is going to be a 10, for sure. All right, so we're going to send this up to SharePoint. Just going to save it as a sample report. That looks perfect. That's exactly what I want. And I'm going to share a, a, a fantastic feature of SharePoint that you probably have never seen before. How many of you were aware that you can render Excel charts in SharePoint? <laughs> a couple people have seen that one? All right, well, let's just prove it. So yeah, uh, obviously then I can go look at my reports, and in my reports now, I'm going to have the new one we just loaded down here a few seconds ago. And obviously now I can actually look at this, I can manipulate this, and I can actually create almost all my dashboards in Excel, publish out to Excel services. So that's pretty exciting. I know most folks have seen that before. But we're going we're gonna to bump it up a notch. All right, Mike. All right. So now that we have this in Excel services, there's a whole stack of features you can take advantage of in Excel services. Uh, I, I think this one will either get you promoted or at least get you out of work at 4 on a Friday so you can happy hour earlier. <laughs> OK? <laughs> so uh, like Andrew said, this chart is now published in Excel services. It's in a workbook. Uh, but what a lot of people don't know is that each individual chart or table component in your workbook has its own URL. So there's something called the REST API that you can use uh, to pull that chart out. And then you can take advantage of it in other places. So let me open up a new tab here. And we have a couple of these URLs bookmarked. Uh, here's an example of a uh, report very similar to what Andrew built earlier, uh, where we have a red, yellow, green uh, heat map. And you can see here, I'm only looking at the table. I didn't even have to load the whole workbook. So uh, if I zoom in on the URL here, uh, you can see uh, it's kind of interesting, right? It's uh, VTI bin, Excel REST, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, don't worry how to, how to find this URL. We have it blogged up. Uh, but basically, it uh, points directly to the model right here. Uh, within that workbook, and it pulls out that pivot table, all right? So I can take uh, this URL, I can use it in any of the other SharePoint web parts that display a, a page on, on, in SharePoint, um, and I can just render that table by itself, all right? How does that rate on the Teresometer? <laughs> Pretty cool. But wait, there's more, okay? <laughs> so uh, let's look at a chart. So this was a table. So here's a chart. Very similar to what Andrew just built. So we can do the same thing with a chart. So let me copy this URL. And what's the one thing that a project manager has to do almost every week? A right. status report. Yes. OK. They have to put together a status report, right? Uh, people use Word. They use some other tools. I could actually take that URL, come over here to Word, and go insert, quick part, field, and I select links and references, include picture, and I can paste this right here. When I click OK, boom, there's my chart. How do you like that? <laughs> cool. Pretty good. And the question we always get, well, is this dynamic? Does it update? Yes, if you update your Excel workbook, we inserted it as a link and reference. It'll pull down the new chart. OK, but wait, I'm going to show one more thing. OK. So, the next thing a project manager has to do is put together a status meeting, right? There's always a status meeting. We have to review status. So let me come over here to PowerPoint. I can go insert, picture, drop in my URL. We'll select, uh, I think it's um, link, insert and link. There's my chart in PowerPoint. How do you like that? <laughs> Pretty good. So just by building one report and publishing it to Excel services, we've completed our report, our status report, 
and our PowerPoint deck, so you can get out of work early. <laughs> okay. How does that rate on the tresometer? Did we get to a 10? All right, let's, let's do it again. Do it How again. does that rate on the tresometer? <laughs> okay, they like happy hour. 10? All right. Is that, is that a 10? All right, we got to 10. Everything Great. is all downhill from here, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> All right, so I, think, uh, so I think we've got one other demo, that, or a couple, a couple more demos that we're going to show. Um, so I think I'll hand it back to uh, Andrew. Yep. All right. So, th so this is something I'm guessing most folks haven't seen yet, at least at this conference. And, and what I'd like to present now are two common scenarios that I run into when reporting using Excel services. And those scenarios are all around filtering, because it's nice to create reports but how do I ensure that these reports are relevant to me, to the end user? So let me show you a couple techniques you can use to filter the reports dynamically within SharePoint and within Office 365. Uh, so let's just close this. Actually, let's uh, close this as well. And let's close that. And let's go over here. So I've got a couple reports I've prepared. This is a, a pretty common sort of report. And what we're showing here in this report is resource work. So I'm looking at what my resource capacity is, my cumulative capacity, my, my current work, uh, versus my bar chart, which is pretty much showing the same thing per month. And I can click on my resources, otherwise known as people, and I can see what their allocation looks like over time. How many of you would use something like this? I'm guessing quite a few. Pretty common sort of report? All right. Good. All right. Fantastic. Now, the difference is when I promote this to SharePoint, I'm going to save that to SharePoint. And I'm going to click on the option so I can actually select which elements I want to publish. But what I can also do is I can set parameters. So these parameters allow me to create filtered data push that filtered data into the parameter, and use that to control what the chart returns. So in this case, I'm actually promoting the slicer. That's the item I was clicking on to show people's names. And I'm just going to save that to SharePoint. In this case, I've already done that. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to change users. So bear with me for a second. And I've created a page right here where I've already embedded that report. All right, so so far, nothing too exciting. Created a chart, promoted that parameter, saved it to SharePoint. I'm exposing it using a, an Excel web part. But when I look at this page, what I see is I've got this extra web part that's invisible. It's a current user filter. And what this web part does is it goes see who I am, who I'm logged in as, which in this case is my system account. And it's going to take parameters from my user profile and plug it into that chart to filter that chart based on who I am, my identity. So what I'm going to do now is just connect that web part to Excel. And I'm going to plug the value that that web part is generating into the parameter. Looks good so far. I'm going to stop editing. Now, it's throwing an error right now because I, as administrator, do not have any tasks. So it's trying to find the administrator in that chart. It's not finding it. It's returning an error. So let's log in as someone else. Sure. I'm going to open it again, and let's log in as Adam. So Adam here opens up Office 365. And when he goes to that site, he should see if everything works, if the demo gods are smiling, he should see a page. Now, we do reserve the right to blame any and all issues with our demo on internet connectivity and or Dreamweaver. <laughs> yes. Why do we take out sign in as a different user? I'm going to. Oh, um, you, are you, like uh, from a more uh, general SharePoint uh, perspective, the the option itself. Um, 
You know, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I probably have yes. to defer to say uh, yes. <laughs> probably have to defer to one of the one of the auth teams for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I know I know when we were looking at Office 365, there were some interesting scenarios there with uh, how we you know capture the credentials for the external service as well. So I think it was a matter of kind of bringing those two experiences together, uh, from what I remember. Uh, we had very very good reasons, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, anyways, as you can see, what's happened now is it's pulled up his his report and it's filtered automatically on Adam. He can see his own data. Personalized dashboards. That's what we can offer you. How does that rank on the three summiter? Yeah. Pretty good. What was that? That's still a 10. All right. Well, let's give you one more example. So, how else do people typically filter their Excel charts? By project. So, not only can I create a PMO or portfolio level report, not only can I make a personal level report, but what a lot of people ask for is a project level dashboard. How do we do that? We go into project, obviously the project web app. And how many of you are familiar with something called a project detail page or a PDP? A couple of us are. So the way it works in 2010 and onward is when I click on a project such as this, I have a collection of pages. These pages are a series of web parts. I can configure these pages to show whatever data I want. So in this case, I'm actually modifying the web part to pull the specific fields I want. And consider this almost like a form. So I can pull the different forms. I can actually modify which forms appear by where the project is in the workflow. But in this case, I've got a couple pages. I've got a page for project details. I've got a, a page just to show the schedule and the timeline. And now what we've done is we've actually added a project dashboard. So if I look at this, what this is showing me is data specifically filtered on this project. How does that rank on the Teresometer? <laughs> what was that? Yeah. It could be. I know lunch <laughs> is coming up. Uh, so, so great. We appreciate your patience here. How do we do this? Without going into too many details, because we do have it documented, there's another filter called the Project Unique ID filter. Or sorry, it's called the um, Query String filter. And what that's doing is it's going into the URL of this site. And if you look at the URL, you'll see that at the end of every URL is appended a 36-digit identifier for the project, the Project Unique ID. So we can actually pull that from the URL, plug it into the Excel chart as a parameter, and we use that to then filter the Excel chart by project. So it's actually, it's, it's relatively simple to deploy. The trick is just making sure I've got that project unique ID as a filter on my pivot chart. So that right there filters some very common scenarios. I'm now going to hand it back to Mike because I think right now it's what, it's 1130. We've been mm -hmm. talking for about an hour. You think it's time? I think it's time. You think it's time? No, All right, for the first back. time ever, ladies and gentlemen, project server is going to go map. We're going full on map. Yeah. Do you uh, reset the accounts? Uh, are they logged oh. in correctly? Yeah. So Andrew and I, we attended a lot of BI sessions this week, and we started feeling a little bit left out. All right. <laughs> Would you say? Yes. I think all, almost all the BI sessions have some type of a fancy map demo, right? Uh, looking at geospatial data. Uh, he talked about it with Bon Jovi last night. He didn't want to do anything with Project Server. So we're like, you know what? Let's just put something together. So, uh, so we thought, well, how can you relate uh, map data to you know, project, uh, project Server? What's in it for the project manager? <laughs> so, uh, so we have this demo that we're going to show you. Uh, we're using OData. Uh, we actually uh, are going to pull out some data from Project Server and combine it with the Bing Map service. So here in Project, we created uh, one custom field called Office, right? And this will store the location. So this could be Seattle, it could be Boston, it could be Las Vegas. And we thought, well, you know what? It might be useful to map out uh, geographically where your projects are occurring. Maybe you want to include it in you know, some type of scheduling or have it uh, you know, posted somewhere. Uh, so here we have uh, a no data query that's going to pull in um, a list of projects. And we're just going to look at the cost of these projects uh, per office, OK? So we have our list of projects. We have how much they're costing. And we have, where, have their location. So Dallas, Miami, Tulsa, Chicago. So we showed this earlier, right, with, the, with LinkPad. So here I can just copy my URL from LinkPad. 
And I'll come over here to Excel, and I have a new Excel sheet. And we already did this earlier. We're going to go from other sources, OData feed. And I'll drop this in and hit Next. I'm going to select my data set. And that's fine. We'll create a new data source. But this time, I'm going to go directly to Power View. So you've probably seen this in a couple of demos this week. Uh, so this is actually going to open up a new Power View sheet here in Excel. And you'll see that data that we pulled into Excel is part of our, our internal model, which is new in Excel 2013. So I can use that in the Excel, regular Excel sheets. I can use it in Power View. We used it in Power Pivot earlier. And so on the right, I have those three fields that we queried. I have office, I have project name, and I have total cost. So I can just start clicking these, adding these to my report. So I have a nice little table here. Let me select my table. And if my mouse cooperates. And if I click map, oh, yeah. There's my project server map. So let me uh, see if I can make so that a little bit bigger. So if you have not yet seen the map demo, pretty cool. You probably have a couple more map demos to get through before the end of the conference, I'm guessing. But yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to add these again. So I have a nice table down here below. And now I can actually click the locations in my map, and it's going to filter that data in my report. So I can see what's my cost in Boise, what's my cost in Las Vegas. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So see, it, it filters based on what I'm selecting in Power View. So I could actually take this report. I can upload it to Excel services. Uh, maybe I want to give this a uh, quick um, title here. <laughs> and now we have our project server map demo. How does this rate on the tree summer? <laughs> And they Great. like maps. Back, back at the time, they maps like maps. are good. I think so. All right. Great. All right. Well, this is the last demo. Let's uh, transition back to the slide deck here and do a quick recap. Uh, so we, sh we, we briefly walked through timelines, desktop, yeah, sure. OData, and Excel. Yeah, we have uh, one more slide here that we just want to discuss. Uh, the, the OData service is pretty interesting. Um, did it, has anybody heard about this new SharePoint apps thing? <laughs> OK. All right, a couple of sessions this yeah. week. So you can take that OData URL as a service, and you can also use that in SharePoint apps. Uh, so we have partners today. We have customers today. They're starting to build apps using OData to pull that data in. So if there's a more detailed type of report or dashboard you'd like, you can use OData to pull that, to pull that data in. Uh, so I would just keep an eye on the, on the SharePoint marketplace. There's already some apps out there looking at um, uh, milestone trending analysis and, and things like that. Um, so uh, moving on here. So I just already recapped a little bit. Uh, we discussed timelines, uh, the project client desktop, OData and SharePoint apps today. Uh, these were, th were the areas we hit, including the, the REST API uh, and Excel services. But just as a reminder, there are tons of tools out there. We just barely skimmed the rock over the surface of what uh, Microsoft has available in terms of BI and reporting. Uh, these tools are still available today. Uh, so I know there were a couple sessions on Performance Point, for on-premises, uh, BCS. Uh, we showed one report in PowerView, but there's a lot of other um, options there. Uh, so, so I encourage you to kind of research those and, and see how they kind of fit into, into your scenario on-premise, whether it's, you know, OData or, or, or SQL. Um, so I think... Um, I'd like to point out some of the references that we have available. So here in this deck, we've linked to a, a, uh, a lot of project conference content uh, from earlier this year. There, like Andrew said, there were uh, two sessions that we did. These are available for anybody to access. They're on MSDN right now. Uh, there's a link to the Project BI site, the BI Tech Center, uh, SharePoint as well. Uh, there's links here to both Andrew's blog and the project team blog. Like I said, tons of posts rolling out there, uh, and a link to the Excel team's blog, because there's a lot of interesting things that they post related to modeling, Excel services, and, and Excel client. And then, of course, there's also a couple of white papers available um, that walk through Project Server BI and SharePoint BI. So in case you missed it on the previous slide, here's a link to the blogs. I think there's some posts going live right about now. And I'll hand it back to Andrew to take us home. All right, so let's close out with some questions. We're going to flip things around a little bit. We're asking you the questions. We're going to see how well we did in terms of communicating information. So you're ready for this uh, pop quiz. Oh, wow. And it's not showing up with the projector, so you can read it. All right, which tool should I use to provide an overall summary of key program? Projects and milestones, OK, the timeline. Wow, we didn't try it on the projector, I guess. I'll just skip through this then. 
All yeah. right. <laughs> You're all awesome. What a fantastic crowd. Uh, you got them all correct. Uh, we do want to thank Teresa. By the way, Teresa gets a fabulous prize, a slightly used copy of I Love Charts from the award-winning online blog. Uh, we also have a, a lot of content coming up. Uh, there's still some content yet to, to be seen on Project Server. Uh, if you are really interested in, in the app store for Project Server, you can build a time machine and go back in time and go to the same presentation or similar presentation going on in the exact same time slot as we are right now. Um, but there's just basically a whole lot of content. So let's pause there and any questions? I think uh, you, sir, in the front. So the question is, can I add that project filter? So I can, can I pull that project unique ID from the workspace URL, basically, and filter an Excel chart? Uh, two different couple answers. Mm -hmm. So on-prem, on-cloud. Uh, on-prem, I believe someone actually wrote an app. Alex Burton out of Australia uh, wrote an app that'll do that. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's a bit of code you can put on the workspace. It'll pull that unique ID. Uh, the other way you could do that is to pull the name of the project off the URL and use that to filter your Excel report. So there's a couple options. I've actually done something like that with InfoPath, that it pulls the URL, goes into the database, and pulls the project ID to filter the data. Uh, so there's a couple options there. It's a great question. Yeah. And I want to encourage, uh, thanks everybody for attending. Yeah. Uh, if you like the session, please fill out the evaluations and have a